Hi there, in my latest episode I showed how Alice recognized intent based on the history of recent messages. This time we will go a step further and see how the recognized intent is used to retrieve memories. We know that Alice memories are divided into groups. Each group has its own name, some antique tags and optional URL that can be used when generating responses. The division into groups allows her to clearly separate memories from resources and skill descriptions. Alice recognized the intent of every query she receives. So when I greet her, for example, she only reaches into her own memories, the green area. However, when I ask her a question that is not associated with any category, Alice can use her general knowledge and any other area of her memories. Ultimately, when I ask her to perform a task, Alice focuses on that task, but she can also use other areas of her memory to accomplish it. Here we can see how memory organization and intent recognition allow for effective searching and filtering of necessary information, which is then included into the conversation context, specifically in the system prompt. The prompt contains instruction that, in simplified terms, tell Alice to use the context to provide responses. Since memories are loaded dynamically, they need to be separated from each other so that Alice understands where each memory begins and ends. It is also incredibly important to make sure that the loaded context fragments are useful for accomplishing the current task and do not introduce noise that could lead to the model hallucination, which is quite a challenging task to avoid. In practice, when I ask a question about Alexa, my dog, all the information about her appears in the context. This allows Alice to correctly identify who I'm referring to. The thing is that the context cannot be infinite, and for GPT-4 it is limited to 8000 tokens, taking into account both the conversation and the generated response. This means that during the conversation I have to dynamically replace the context to avoid exceeding the limit. Therefore, searching should be focused on the latest question but at the same time it must at least consider the ongoing conversation. For example, if in the next message I ask Alice to save information about my dog, she needs to know that this time I'm asking her to connect with Notion, but the note content must include her last statement. The same applies when I ask Alice to play my favorite music. Her task then is to search her memories and skill list to actually play Spotify. The general interaction pattern is that Alice always takes into account our latest messages to determine what to do at any given moment. By default, she searches all categories of her memories and if necessary she can focus on one of them. In both cases, the search is based on a combination of similarity search implemented with the help of of the pinecone and additional mechanism for searching, filtering and selecting memories that contains relevant information. To make all this work together, it is necessary to store information in a way that allows it to be included in the context. For example, if I tell Alice that I like riding a bike, I would like her memory to say that Adam likes riding a bike. Therefore, it is necessary to rephrase the information in a way that it becomes Alice's memory. In addition, Alice also takes care of naming and generating semantic tags for each of her memories. Both of these pieces of information are helpful in increasing the chances of correctly retrieving them during the conversation. Due to the length limitation of the context, it is important to control the length of individual memories. In my case, Alice's memories are usually very short and do not contain more than few sentences. However, when Alice reads an article, she can either remember its brief summary or save its content by dividing it into smaller fragments. Tasks related to dividing longer documents into smaller ones can be accomplished with the help of Langchain and the available tools within it. Although Langchain is currently in its early stages of development and has various flaws, it can be successfully used for tasks like this. Now let's see how it all works in practice. On the right side we have Alice app and on the left the log of my private API that this version of the application connects to. I mention this because the application available on the heyalice.app connects directly to OpenAI and the query does not go through my server. Anyway, when I greet Alice, you can see here that she first recognizes the query and selects only the entries marked as memories about us to the context. 
However, if I ask her to gather what she knows about Kate, this time she will understand that this is about performing an action, but will also search her memories about Kate. As a result, after a while, a note with the requested information will appear in my Notion. Moving on, when I ask Alice to remember that information about the tools I use can be found on brainovermint.com, she will refer to her own API to save the paraphrased memory. This way, when I ask her about it in the future, she will be able to correctly use that knowledge. In my daily work with Alice, various adults related to her behavior still occur. Some of them I cannot solve yet, while others are waiting in the backlog. Currently my focus is on connecting Alice to the internet and the ability to respond based on previously remembered websites. Until then, with the growth of memories, it will be necessary to expand the search mechanism and overall memory retrieval strategy. I will talk about this in the future episode, so if you are interested in this topic, subscribe to my channel. Meanwhile, thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.